So here try to insert record in this table. Insert a record in this table, okay? Insert data, insert a row. Insert row data here. Load driver get connection create statement. Yeah. So here create one DML statement. DML insert insert into student and pass your required values here. Insert into student values. Value first one is ID. Triple one ID. The next name. Name we need to pass in single quotes here. Okay. Here you need to use single quotes. In the single quotes pass your name here. Something Ajay and student email Ajay at gmail.com. Pass your parameters here. Strings you need to pass in single quotes. And if it is an integer, directly can pass number. The next here use statement dot execute update and pass your DML insert here. Then this statement will return as what? How many rows affected by this? query it will return here so using this statement if i try to execute how many rows it will affect means how many records it is inserting here only one record so if only one record if it affects then it will return as that number of rows affected rows affected by your query number of rows affected system dot out dot print ln number of rows inserted you can print that rows affected by your query here and one more thing you should do here you should commit your transaction in case of dml statements create statement and execute dml and you should do one more thing here commit transaction you should commit your transaction here actually here by default it will commit your transaction by default it will commit but sometimes you may need to commit manually here okay so here by default it will commit so that you no need to worry why you no need to worry here by default your connection commit is by default it is true but if you configure set auto commit equal to false here set auto commit by default it is true default default it is true default it is true if it if you make it false then this statement it will not insert permanently in your database you must need to call connection dot commit you need to call connection dot commit here so using this connection dot commit you can commit your transaction until unless applying your commit your statement will not going to database okay so commit is mandatory when commit is mandatory if this set auto commit is false but by default it is true if it is a true then this commit is not required okay so just i'll comment this statement okay now run this insert into student values now it is right statement right yeah execute it number of rows inserted one row inserted into database select here select a star from student so one record inserted here okay so yeah i'll make this set auto commit equal to false then i'll try to insert one more record here record id student id triple two and student name something vijay and vijay at gmail.com now here my statement auto commit is false if this auto commit is false without having this connection dot commit this record is not going to your database run this here it is showing number of rows affected by this query is one and check record here 
record still not inserted here because our transaction not committed so here in this case what you should do you need to call connection dot commit when you call connection dot commit then your statement will flush into database okay until unless calling this commit your statement will not execute on database then run this now still it is showing number of rows affected one check your database now new record inserted here okay so in case if you set your connection auto commit equal to false your statements it will not insert into database in case of what this commit operations required only for dml let's say if you try to execute any ddl statement here or if you try to execute any drl statement here this connection dot commit is not required only for execute update method you have to use this commit operations okay this commit when you should use only for execute update commits we need to use only for commit need to apply transaction transaction commit need to apply only for only for dml queries only for your dml queries you need to apply transactions for the remaining queries you no need to apply in case if your statement auto commit falls also you no need to worry okay by default that statements it will execute only for dml statements you need to worry about this transactions okay yeah so in this way you can insert your record now we know how to insert record how to create table then finally i'll show you how to retrieve that records from database using this same statement how to get data from database already we have two records then the two records if you want to get how to get that records so to get records we have one more method execute query method to execute drl statements in case of statement to execute drl we have one method execute query method using this execute query method you can execute your drl statements okay so in case of execute query method the result type is result set statement dot execute query method here you can pass your required drl query then finally it will result it will return us a result set array object it will result it will return us a result set array object now using this result set array you can expect your data here how it will insert data in this result set whenever you try to get data from database how it will keep your data into this result set let's say if you have a table let's say if you have a table here student table in that student table if you have records id name and email and if you have records here 1 2 3 records a b c a at gmail dot com b at gmail dot com c at gmail dot com if you write here select a star from if you write select star from table student so if you write a select star from student what happens it will fetch all the records so how many rows we have here row 1 row 2 and row 3 three rows we have here so this three rows records it will store into your result set object how it will store into this result set object one result set array internally it will create one result set array it will create with three rows it will create one result set array three rows okay and with four columns okay in this first column it will store one boolean flag boolean flag values it will store here boolean flag the next column it will store your records it will store your records here it is a simple array a result set array now from this result set array if you want to get data first you need to check this boolean value if it is true then you need to continue if it is false then you should not continue okay so here this boolean flag how we can 
get this boolean flag value from this result set there is one method result set dot next method so this result set dot next method will return your flag value here so if flag value if it return true then you can continue to the next record you can continue to the next record here when you can continue if your boolean flag value if it is true when it will keep true value here if there is any record here if it find record in first row then it will keep boolean flag value true in second row if it find then it will keep boolean flag true in third row boolean flag true then coming to fourth row there is no flag value it will keep final flag value here false means it will not continue this iteration because here this flag value it will keep false so how to get this next values how to get this value how to get this value and how to get these values based on this column data types based on this column data types it will store your particular data type here let's say if this column data type if it is number and if it is var care it will store this id as a number here then how to get numbers from here if you want to get number then you need to call the method get integer if your number type if it is integer you can call get integer get integer or get int get int or integer it is integer and your column number is 1 your column number you need to pass here once if you pass your column number here this integer value it will return us in the form of integer only then next coming to this these two are strings so to get strings you need to call get string you can pass your column number here get string your column number here then it will return two strings and one integer then how to get next row here if you keep this statement in while if while next when it comes to the next row here again it will read your boolean flag value if it is true then again it will continue this row then it will come to the next row if it is true then again it will fetch your records here so how we can do this already we have two records in database so now how to fetch that records here result set test load driver get connection create statement handle exceptions class not found exception and sql exception yeah then here create one drl query here drl drl query select a star from table name is student then to execute this statement we have a method statement dot execute query pass your drl here then what it will return to us it will return as result set then iterate this result set in case while while if it is true then only it will continue right while dot next it will check your first record is there or not if first record if it find then you can iterate that first record system dot out dot println id how to get id here result set dot integer sorry it is get int the method is get int okay get int pass your column number my column is first column then next row system dot out dot println name result set dot get string pass your second column then finally email rs dot get string third column okay so how many times it will iterate this loop until unless there is no record in result set it will iterate this while here